So, as, as I told you, we are going to begin practice number five. It is called conceptual, conce contextual, or conceptual analysis. Because here, I know when you uh, started working with Atlas DI, this kind of the first tests you did, you created quotations, you created some codes, memos, just to play in the, in the first practices. Now, we are going to see how the coding must be done. So, of course, you could play. In the previous practices, you could create some codes by hand based on your intuition. But now, I'm going to explain you which type of codes we need to create. Because practice number five is related to that. We are going to try to identify all these ideas that are related to customer experience in a specific codes. We have seen them, all of them, because the coding we are going to use, we are going to use like three types of codes. One of them is going to be, or some of them are going to be related to the generators of experience. And if you remember, there were five or six elements, the star, processes, um, environmental, well, uh, physical evidence, and so on. So, whenever you read the transcriptions and you find these kind of underlined sentences, when you find an underlined sentences, sentence means that this sentence in some way, it's going to be part of our study. So we have to think about which generator is this idea related to? Star, physical evidence, waiting time, whatever. The second element we need, or the second dimension we are going to analyze, the second type of code, is the customer journey map. Here is easier because we know that the things people, the uh, ideas that people are going to tell us in the, um, in the interviews or in the focus group are going to be related either to the customer journey map before customer journey map after or customer journey map sorry, during and so on the second level we are going to see or try to analyze if this if the individual is talking to me about something that happened before, during, or after the visit to the thematic park, hotel, or whatever. And the third level of coding we are going to use is, as you should know, the levels of customer experience. That is, the transactional level, the <clears throat> Uh, relational level or the experiential level. Remember that the last practice, the practice number four, was related only to this. But now we need to keep in mind these three elements the generators, when this happened, before, during, and after, and if it's transactional, relational, or experiential. So we usually, when we uh, develop or we do, we um, implement a, an, uh, an interview, we get a lot of information. The, the individual answer a lot of things. So when we find an interesting sentence, we need to think about, is this sentence or is this element that the individual is talking about related to staff, process, physical evidence, whatever? So we identify, this is going to, and we assign this code. This is going to be staff because he or she is talking about the waiter when he or she is in the restaurant. The waiter, staff. But if it's the waiter when we are in the restaurant, it's also it's a staff, but it's also during the visit to the restaurant. And at the same time, it's relational. So as you can see, one sentence can be many things. In general, they are going to be, of course, two, at least two of these three. Whenever we see a sentence that explains, for example, the thematic, the thematic part is very clean, 
very organized, whatever. Okay, what is this? Maybe physical evidence. Okay, this one. Is it during? Yes, during. And for example, transactional or experiential. It depends because if the individual talk about the price, the optimal price, cheap. So we need to read and to think. Of course, some of them can be in the middle. This is why we use a memo sometimes because we say, okay, we are not sure, could be this and that. But in general, they are quite clear. And this is what we have to do now. Assign to these ideas, to the different codes. These are the codes we are going to use or similar to this. I'm going to explain you later. So what we are going to do, I'm going to use another uh, similar analogy that I used in the first uh, practice or in the practice number four. If you remember, in practice number four, we were talking about, or I explained you, like the first level of analysis of a test DR was, it was like an astronomer. At the first time, in the first time, or the, the first moment, the individual watch at the sky without any device, just to identify the different, the, the, the main stars. And when he or she is clear about, okay, I'm going to focus on this. So he or she used it. In this case, what we are going to do, to do is to categorize. Even that in, the, in practice number four, you have underlined the relevant sentences. Now we are going to focus on these relevant sentences. And we are going to try to see if they belong to this family, this family, this family, or which combination. Is it clear? Uh, well, this is just for you to read. When we, one interesting thing, when we talk about coding, think of this. Now, in this subject, we know that it's the first time you, you are involved in this type of studies. We give you the way to code. I mean, we explain you throughout the course, the customer experience generator, the customer journey map, and the different levels. So at this point, you know more or less the context. But you see, in the, in the future, you do a study different than customer experience, you are going to be forced to read and to find this code by your own. But in this case, and when we code, we try to simplify reality. So codes, is recommend, it's recommended that codes are short and descriptive. Some people use a very long code with a lot of letters, it's a problem. It should be short and descriptive. So these are the levels we are, we are working on. You have already done the textual level just for one primary document. But well, as I told you, in this conceptual level, you, you need to include all and you need to redo the textual levels with the, all the documents. And after coming uh, from, from uh, Easter vacation, we are going to see organizational level. <clears throat> technically, I have changed the organization in which I'm going to teach because technically uh, I was supposed to teach organizational level next Monday. But I want you, I, I want to give you I don't know why this year is being a little bit more complicated. Groups are not very implicated. Well, difficulties from one year to the other. So what I have decided to do is to move this practice to uh, the weeks after Easter vacation. In this way, you, have, you are going to have more time to do properly this one, the one of this class, and to redo the previous one. You are going to have time enough to gather all the information you need, everything. So you are going to have time enough. Next Monday, we are going to have a class, the different one. Well, in fact, it was a class that I, I planned for the second part of the semester. In the next class, that is also compulsory, next Monday, it's not a problem. Paella is on Wednesday, I think it's not a problem. And I'm going to explain probably three studies. We are going to see all together three studies from the beginning till the end. We are going to see the objective, the steps, studies different that, than our studies, for you to see other examples apart from customer experience. But we are to focus on this. So organizational level, textual level, conceptual, and organization. This is the whole map, and we are going to do this part.
the, the coding to the This is the same slide that I showed you last week. How to categorize, as I told you? Well, in our case, you are going to use this category because it's easier for me to give you something in the first at the first point. But if in the future you get involved in this, you need, in order to create your code book, you are going to need to read the state of the art. I mean, to read the studies that analyze what you want to analyze you know, before you create the code. You are not going to do this this year. Of course, the textual analysis you, did, you do in practice number four, or you did in the practice number four, can help you. Because in the textual analysis, you can read things that could be interesting in terms of coding. But in this case, I'm going to give you the code. Here, here you have them. The software Atlas TI allows us to code to code in different ways. I mean, you have done it because all of, all, the, all the different groups have created their first hermeneutic unit, and you created some quotations underlining in 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 yellow, and you created by hand some codes. So you know uh, physically how to do it. I imagine that most of you use the open coding uh, alternative. I mean, select the sentence and put some words, code by hand. But there are many other ways. Uh, I usually recommend to use open coding at the beginning because you are going to read the transcription. And maybe the first time you see a sentence that is related to physical evidence, you are going to write physical evidence. But in the same, imagine if you have to read three primary documents, maybe this code, you need this code many, many, many more times. You don't need to write them every time. As soon as you write them one time, it appears in the program and you can use it. This is called encoding by list. I mean, when you create a code, for, exa for example, customer journey map before, because it's something that appeared before, the program, the software, say this code, the writing. So the only thing you need to do is to use it more times. So usually the first time you code a document, it's time consuming because you write a lot, but the second document is very fast because you say, okay, this one before, I click it from the place where it is and I drag it. I'm going to show you later. And there are other types of coding that I don't really like it in vivo encoding and fast encoding. They are not convenient for this type of studies. In open coding, I'm going to show you later, is what I told you. Here I say, we can use different codes from, for the same sentence. Imagine I find, as I told you in the example, a sentence that is related to the attention, the very good attention of the waiter in the, in the restaurant. So this sentence, of course, is related to staff. Because it's people that are attending to it. Okay. But this attention is going on during. So, and also is related to relational issues. So this idea is going to have three codes, one, two, and three, and the same time. And it's very easy to do what I do here. Don't worry, I'm going to show you later in the show. Um, codes. How to create the codes physically? You know that, but explanation is pretty good. As usual, we can go to the main menu here. You can open the primary document and click uh, above, and you can do it by hand. Or the other way that is more convenient from my point of view is to select the sentence. Imagine I, I find this sentence interesting. I select the sentence. I click in the right bottom of the um, of the mouse, and it gives me different alternatives. It says open coding, in vivo coding, list coding. Here is a little bit small, but it says open, vivo, list. Given that it's the first time that I code something, I'm going to what I'm going to do is to put open coding. I click open coding, and it opens this second window. 
In this second window, as you can see, I can write different things here. So what I would do in the example I have explained before, stuff, if the sentence is related to stuff, I would put by hand in the first, first, uh, in the first uh, space, stuff. But if it's also related at the same time to cover customer journey map during, I'm going to write customer journey map during in the second. As soon as I fill the second one, it's going to put me a third one in case I want to put another one. If I leave it blank, no problem, accept, or maybe it's related to another code and I write relational. In this way, I do the job only one time. I select the sentence and I classify the sentence into the different elements. And I repeat this throughout. Of course, the first time that I write the names, staff, customer journey, whatever, the, the, the software keeps save these elements. So for the next time, I don't need to write. It's going to be there. I accept. And when I say accept, it saves the element. So imagine that I go to the second line, third line, and I select a different line. I can, if I am going to use one of the codes that I created before, I don't need to write them again. What I can do is to click right bottom, um, code list coding, coding by list. And it opens this table, and it show me, shows me the element that I created before. So the only thing that I have to do is to click here. Okay. I don't need to rewrite every time. It's faster. But you can only uh, copy the, the memo if you want to select the three. Exactly. I mean, if you only want to put stuff. No, of, no, no, no. You can uh, choose several. I mean, imagine uh, here you are going to have all the lists. If you want to choose only one, you click here, only one. But that one is, 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 is with the three, three parts, right? Like, no, uh, that's not necessary. Uh, it creates individual. I mean, this is a short example that I created for the class. But this example, if I would do this example as in the blackboard, it would appear three. One, two, and three. Okay. It would appear one, two, and three. And I can choose the one I want. Because here you have a square and you can choose one, two, three, whatever. Of course, recommendation. Uh, usually you have to code by hand a lot. Uh, some, because you need a lot. As soon as you have some, you can reuse them. Uh, more things, of course, whenever we finish, we can check the codes if they have been created and so on. Important thing or relevant thing. Think about this coding. Generators during uh, or customer journey map levels. What is my recommendation for you to do? Depending on the number of the members you are going to have, different requirements in terms of interview, focus, or whatever, I'm going to tell you later. But my recommendation is that you do practice number five in one time. I mean, that you have the three elements you need, first interview, second interview, focus group, the other groups only interviews, depending on the number of people. You have the three elements transcribed, you put them in the, into the software and you do this coding in one day. I mean, why? Because of the um, consistency. Imagine you have only one in dev interview and you do this job with one interview. And you don't have the second or the focus group and you leave this for two, to do it in two weeks. The way you do it is going to change. So it's better to gather the information, to see it one morning, uh, to, to codify or to code three uh, primary documents. Uh, the ones you are going to work with, uh, it's, going, it's going to be three hours, four hours, not more than that. 
So it's better to do it in one morning. If possible, two members or even the three members to start reading together and to call. This sentence is interesting. What do you think is this? Is this or that? Do it. How we do this process or this coding process in real life? In real life, what we do in a project, in a funded project, two people or at least two people do the coding individually. One researcher do the coding, a different researcher do the coding. We have two codings, and what we do is using the, the Atlas TI to analyze the and the overlapping. I mean, if one person do the coding and another person do the coding individually, and I ask the pro the software to compare both coding, the more agreement, the better. Usually, this is called intercoder uh, agreement. We are not going to do this, but I want you to know that this is how we work. To avoid these problems, my recommendation is to do it in one more, in one month, not not to divide this activity in two or three weeks. Okay. As soon as you finish, when you finish your decoding with all these these elements, you are going to have a list like this. Of course, longer than this, because you are going to have more codes. And you are going to have the list of codes, and uh, at the right, or this bar, is going to mean the number of times that this code is repeated, the frequency. So we can see here, entornos espaciales, environmental space, two, staff, two. But this is an example. You are going to have more numbers. But this is an example, an idea. But in one interesting thing when we are dealing with codes, uh, at the end, the codes we are going to use are these, this right side. But we know that these codes would be associated into families. I mean, all the different elements like staff, processes, physical evidence, all these codes belongs to a family. And this family is a family of generators of customer experience. All these codes before, during, and after belong to the family customer journey map. And all these belong to the levels. But the software at this point is not identifying this. The software at this point is considering each code as individual, as different. Can I associate them for further analysis? Because in next classes, we are going to do some more analysis. Yes, we can. We can select those that belong to the same family and put them all together in a family to create a family. Can you see my point? I'm going to explain you how. So what we do is to create a family. Families, we can do create families of many things, but from my point of view and taking into account this subject, the most interesting family is the families of, are the families of codes. So what we are going to do is as I told you, Imagine that I have all these codes and I want to put them together. For example, all those codes that are related to the customer journey map before, during, and after, these three, I want to put them in a family, in the family of customer journey map. This family is going to tell me one specific thing. If the opinion of individual is related to the stages that happen before coming to the hotel, or is, is the time during or after. Is it clear? So what I do is I go to the code manager, I select all the three by using the control, one, two, three. And when I have all three selected, right button and new group, new family. And the program is going to tell me, okay, new family, it's going to open a window. I can put the name of the family, in this, in this case, customer journey. And it's going to create a family that is called customer journey. These three belong to customer journey. Can you see what I have done? Not difficult. 
I'm going to do the same, for example, for experiential, relational, and transactional. Imagine, I look at here. If there is a family here now, the first family I created is called customer journey, and it's conformed by this one, two, and three, because it's showing me that this three belongs to a family. How to create a second family with these three levels? The same as easy as before. I select the three, click right button, create group, levels, and I create a second group that is called levels, including this. Just associating things. What do you think? Not difficult. Now I'm going, I'm going to explain you examples or to give you some examples of what people did last year or in the last years for you to see examples. One group that was working in oceanography, they consider, I'm going to explain you, explain you just the customer journey map. This is an example of this. They consider as usual, you briefly before, during, and after. But now, instead of considering just before, during, and after, they created a second level of codes here. For example, before they created or they considered uh, elements like access, entry, price, arrival, queue, information. In the during, personal orientation, attraction, whatever. And after, experience, improvement, check out, whatever. I'm going out from the part. Examples. Here we have another example. Oh, well, this is of the same, the same group. And now I need to tell you, I'm going to show you now some tables. These tables, are the result or the outcome of the con conceptual analysis. In the conceptual analysis, in this practice, we, what we need to do is to create code, codes and families. Second, create the tables. Because we are going to summarize this information in tables. And how many tables are we going to have? At least three tables. <coughs> One, why? Because we have customer generator, customer journey map, and levels. So we are going to have one table for each of the different levels of analysis. The first one, for example, is the customer journey map. This group have created, have done all the coding, and at the end, they created this table. In this table, you can see before, during and after, and before they consider these different uh, codes, information, recommendation, motives, transportation, whatever, during personal uh, additional services, whatever, and after some of them. And what they created in this table, they show me the absolute frequency Absolute frequency basically is the number of times that this code appears. How, where we can find this absolute number here. Remember, in this code manager here, we are going to see how many times this code appears. Two, three, 20, whatever. So this is just to see these values and to copy them into a table. So um, here they have, the number of times that this appears, for, for example, 27 people have, or 27, there are 20 sen uh, 27 sentences that talk about information before going to the park. 27, 15, 41, whatever. So this is the absolute frequency, and the relative frequency is very easy. How many things in total people have said, whatever, the ratio between then 20 is 27 divided by the total is this relative uh, frequency. Yes? Is it only the numbers of only people who answer the interview? 
So because in the question, I can also feel like the words. Uh, no, it's not the. Uh, I, 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 I made a mistake when I explained when I, with my wording. This 27 is the, not, not the number of people. It's the number of times individuals have mentioned this. Yeah, I mean, a person can mention information three times. Can you see the point? Yeah, but also in the, in the question, are it only the answers? Answers, only answers. Of course, of course. Uh, the script we use to do the interview is the script, but we only analyze the answers. Of course, the numbers can change a lot. <clears throat> this is before, during, and after. Okay, as you see, interesting things. Here they have the individual frequency, but here you can see the aggregate frequency. That means before, people regarding oceanographic, before is 16%, 9%, around 25%. It makes sense. But when, when we are talking about a thematic part, we expect that most of the elements are related to the viewers. Can you see the percentages? Let's go to see the second table. Customer experience generator. So we have, it's in Spanish, but it's the same order. Espacio, personal, procesos, prestación, de servicio. Uh, so they have divided. This into feelings, well, feelings and uh, senses. You remember that the table there was a differentiation, so they have divided. It's around 50 50, the difference is not very high, but as you can see, there are elements that are less commented, like for example, staff, only four here, 23, staff is not very many because in this kind of uh, far the interaction with the staff is not too high. In other type of um, in other type of services, we would we are going to see greater frequencies. Customer experience generators and the last one is the levels. As I told you, transactional, experiential, and relational. And in this case, in transactional, experiential, and relational, this group decided to create a second level of codes here. It's not compulsory. You can do it or not. As you see, they have created here learning, resting, cleanliness, tourism, whatever, different things. So we have transactional, experiential, relational. And it makes sense that in the thematic part, the experiential is the one the most frequent. Makes sense. But in our case, our family is going to be levels, not usually. Yes, you don't need. It's not necessary to divide this. Like this. For example, last year one group wanted to do the, the study regarding Cien Montaditos, this kind of very, very low cost restaurant. When I saw the first analysis they gave me, most of the things were experiential. And I said, it doesn't make sense. Cien Montaditos, there's no experience there. You do everything, you see it. You do the you you write the things you want you, so it should be adapted or the frequency should be in the line of the type of uh, company you are using. For example, Marco Polo, one of the groups working about Marco Polo, that is uh, active tourism. Uh, of course, they are going to be more experiential than, than other things. So, and here we have another example in this case of Crucero Contiki. Lucero Contiki, I don't know if you know what it, what it is. If not, try it whenever they begin. It's a boat that goes from Alicante to Tabarca Island. It's a small island that is a couple of hours from Alicante, or hour and a half. So it's a visit. It's a, well, a service. This company, they divide it again in during, before, during, and after. But here, as I told you, they created a second level, information, planning, transport. This second level, you can create it or not, whatever you want. Of course, having this second level gives you more information. But, uh, as you see before, during, and after. The percentages, absolute frequency, 
relative frequency. And, and the families, of course. Uh, the customer experience generator, patio stuff, processes, pres uh, service delivery, the percentages. As you see, it makes sense. It's a goal. And most of the people talk about the goal. Explain their experience in, based on the boat because there are not many services on the boat. So they focus, as you see, 1924 on the place. It would be different, for example, if you go on a cruise, this one week cruise, and you have everything included, theater, whatever, or this is different. But in this kind of boat, it makes sense, this, this result. And the last one, the last level they, they, they talk about were the levels, transactional, experiential, relational. <clears throat> From my point of view, the transactional is a little bit low, taking into account the service, because it's a low cost service probably, is the cheapest way to reach Cabarca. I would think in advance that this would appear more, and the relational is going to appear, sorry, the experiential is going to appear less, but perceptual people is different. So as you see, there are different examples and different ways to, to, to show the data. So this is what, we, what you have to do, basically. You have to <clears throat> in your, your energy unit, you have to upload all the different doc private documents that you have it, all of them. Once you have them, you need to redo practice number four. I mean, you have to underline the sentences you think could be interesting regarding generators, customer journey map, or that. Once you have done this, you have to code. And once you have code, this to do this, Tables is very easy because it's just copy frequencies. What do you think? I'm going to stop. Um,